Now it's time to talk about the transformation tools. In any 3D software, there are three transformation tools, move, rotate, and scale. It's easy to move objects around in a 3D software, but how would you replicate that in a 2D canvas? Let's find out. We have three different axes. We can move this boxer, X toward one vanishing point, Y toward the other vanishing point, since this is a two point perspective, and finally Z, which is the vertical axis. This can also be a third vanishing point in case of a three-point perspective. The first method we can use to move this object is the duplication and measurement tool. So if you want to move this in an x-axis, we start by drawing the diagonals. Then we connect the center to the vanishing point and connecting the corner of the box to the center of the far edge all the way to the upper limit. We can move the box one unit if we want or multiple units in the same direction. Once we decide where we want it, we draw the front face there and connect the other faces by using the original box as a guide. We just moved the box 3 units in the X axis. We can do the same in the Y axis by using the same duplication tool. And the same for the z-axis. You can move the box in any measurement you want. You can move it half a unit, a quarter of a unit, and so on. But there is another way to move objects in perspective, and that is by using the grid. We first decide the unit that this grid is going to use, either one box width, half a box, double the size of the box, or any distance you want to use. Let's stick with one box unit, just to simplify things. I measure the bottom edge of the box toward a horizontal line and connect it to the measuring point. Then I duplicate that unit multiple times and connect them back to the measuring point. Now I have one side of the grid divided into equal parts. I connect these points back to the opposite vanishing point to get the other side of the grid. Finally, I connect to the other vanishing point through the intersection points between the grid lines and the y-axis and the measuring point to get the final division of the grid. Now I have a 5 by 6 grid using one box unit for each square. Now I can move the box in the x and y-axis by using any square and build the box on it. To get the top limit of the box, all I have to do is to use the initial box limit and connect it to the vanishing point. To make sure any box on the grid will be at the same height of the initial box. I can now move the box 5 units in Y, then 2 units in the X axis, and then draw the box there. Or move it 6 units in the X axis and 3 in the Y axis and draw another one there. The grid makes moving objects in perspective a bit faster, since we know any square on the grid is the exact size of the box we want to move. To move the box vertically and toward any other axis, we need to replicate the grid vertically as well. So I measure one unit of the box height and duplicate it upward. Once I have the required number of divisions, I connect it back to the vanishing point at either axis to get the horizontal divisions. To get the vertical divisions, I simply use the segmentation we have already in the y-axis to get the rest of the grid. 
Now I can move the box two units in the Y axis and then raise it up two units in the Z axis. To get the back side of the box, I can again use the grid on the ground to limit the box on the back side. Finally, I connect the rest with the vanishing point and draw the rest of the box. I can do the same for any other place on the grid since now I have a 3D grid that it can show me where to place any box in the correct place. So all these boxes are the same size moved in different places in perspective by using the grid method. But what about more complex shapes? Like for example this T letter. Well it's not that hard. All we need to do is to draw the bounding box for the letter and move it the same way we did before, either by using the duplication measurement or by using the grid. Once I move the bounding box in one axis, I can then divide the bounding box bottom edge by using a horizontal line into three equal parts and draw the middle part of the letter. Then I use the initial letter to find the bottom edge of the top bridge. And just like that, we move the letter in perspective 3 units in the Y axis. I can also use the box method at the same time. For example here I use the measuring point to divide the ground into 6 units. Then duplicate the bounding box from there into another 5 units. Then I use the initial shape to get the rest of the bounding box.
Once I have the bounding box, it's much easier to get all the guidelines from the initial letter back into the bounding box and redraw the letter 11 units back in the x-axis. And here is the letter being moved around in perspective by either using the grid, the measurements, or both tools at the same time. And here is the 3D representation of that using the transformation tool to move the T letter in perspective. So why would we use this transformation tool when we draw? Well here is a simple example of why we want to do that. Let's say we have one object on a table like this milk carton. And we want to either move it to the other location of the table because we want to rearrange the composition or we want to duplicate it at the same size but in a different location. So we will have to use the transformation tool to move it around. Now since this isn't on the ground but on a table, we need to draw the grid of the tabletop to move the milk carton on it. So first we use the milk carton bottom face as a unit for the grid and connect it to both vanishing points. Then we use the horizontal line to divide these lines in both ways to draw the grid. Here I'm going to use the vanishing point to connect the points back to. With that done, I have the tabletop finally divided in both ways as a grid. Now any rectangle I choose to move the milk carton to will be the same width as the initial milk carton. If I want to move it 1 unit in the x-axis and 6 in the y-axis, I can draw the bounding box of the milk carton, move 1 unit in the x-axis with all the key points on it from the initial shape into the box. Like the top where the pyramid starts or the top edge. I take all these key points back to the bounding box so I can redraw the exact details in the correct location. Once I have the bounding box with all the key points on it, I can now move this box 6 units in the y-axis with all the key points drawn on it. I know this is getting messy by following the blue lines here, but now that I moved the bounding box, I can start drawing the details. Like the pyramid is in the middle of the top box. So by using the diagonals, I can find the center and draw the face of the pyramid. Then I can move it back to the vanishing point to get the other edge. I cannot do the same for the top fold of the carton. As for the opening, it's in the middle of the pyramid side face, so I can find the center there and then just freehand draw it on top of it. Once I have all the details, I add the line weight and finish up the curtain. Let's now hide all the perspective lines and see what we got. And there it is, the milk carton moved in perspective on the surface of the table with the same correct size and dimensions. This might seem a bit easy now, but when you have a full scene of items that you want to move, or you want to move a sword from the character hand to the other, or an item maybe on his belt to the other location, all these tools and methods will come in handy. Moving items in perspective is essential when you work in perspective. I know it seems tedious now, but once we get the hang of it, all these techniques will be free-handed on the spot. But we don't just freehand things without knowing the basic knowledge behind it. Otherwise, we will be just guessing. The whole point of this perspective course is to get you comfortable enough in perspective so that you can tell when things look off. Once you get the sense of perspective in your drawings, you will do it much faster and freehand most of it as you draw and sketch your compositions. 
So try to practice moving simple objects and shapes in perspective in all directions using the same methods I showed you here in this video. And make sure you are ready for the next tool we will talk about in the next lesson. For the next lesson, we will move on to the second tool of transformation, the rotation tool. It's a bit tricky that one. So practice as much as you can on moving items and then move on to the next lesson. If you like this lesson, feel free to leave a like. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them as soon as possible. To stay notified for future lessons, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next lesson.